Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. When I got to about age 45, I noticed that I started to gain weight in my midsection. As I went into perimenopause and menopause, it started to get harder and harder and harder to lose weight and easier to gain weight. I got into weightlifting three times a week. I was stretching. I was walking five days a week for 30 to 45 minutes. And all these different approaches I tried, different herbs, different things. I don't eat packaged food and nothing has been working. People have said, it's so confusing the information out there. They say, oh, you have to walk at least 30 minutes a day, but no, you should really walk two hours a day. No, forget that. Just do weightlifting three times a week. If you do weightlifting three times a week, everything will be fine. Here comes Phil Campbell, the author of Ready, Set, Go, Synergy Fitness, a total breakthrough paradigm in the area of fitness. Those of you that have heard about him know that in Oprah's O Magazine, he is considered creating the fastest working workout. He has something called exercise-induced growth hormone workout that potentiates a growth hormone raise between 450 and 560 percent. It's a a 20-minute-a-day discipline of working out And we're going to talk about what that is because there are rules and regulations for this, but it's actually anaerobic, not aerobic workouts for 20 minutes a day. And it's all about releasing HGH hormone during exercise. Phil Campbell's been a very renowned trainer and coach in the area of speed and strength for over 35 years. He has two advanced degrees, both in health services and in sports medicine. People fly all over the world to see him because of his breakthrough results and the compilation of research that he's synergized together to bring us a whole new way to keep our growth hormone at the highest level possible in only 20 minutes a day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Phil Campbell to It's Rainmaking Time. Good morning. Kim, thank you so much for that kind introduction. Well, it's true. It's really, really true. Now, I just finished your book. I haven't actually begun yet. But the first thing I wanted to do is I want you to give us a context for how it is that we are increasing our growth hormone, what that means, in only 20 minutes a day. Explain it to the listeners. Well, in many respects, it's it's the Sprint 8 cardio program, which is really nothing more than scientific play. Uh, A lot of times... uh, you know, I, how many times do you see uh, uh, parents tell their young children or young children coming in and talk to their parents, hey, mom, dad, I'm going to go run uh, 10 miles a day at a seven-minute pace. You know, that's not what children do naturally. What children do naturally is they sprint, they run, they recruit all three muscle fiber types, they work all three energy systems, and they're releasing growth hormone like crazy. Now, that's going to happen, uh, you know, when kids are young. But what the research shows us today is you can actually do a form of exercise, and if you do it correctly, by working your heart muscle anaerobically, so you condition your heart muscle not only for the aerobic process of life, but the anaerobic processes of life, uh, which seems to get, to get us in problems once we get stressed and that sort of thing, but also works all three muscle fiber types that we maintain all of our lives. We just let uh, the uh, fast switch fiber cells get small and wimpy because we don't use them. Uh, and, and with that, a lot of times uh, people start gaining weight around middle age. Uh, and they, the researchers have actually named that the middle age spread. We've laughed about it. We've kid about it for years. But it's the, the called the somatopause, and it's tied directly to the way your body releases growth hormone throughout aging. So that very same substance that athletes are uh, been accused of injecting, uh, your body releases naturally. And, and the researchers actually say it actually mimics taking injections of growth hormone when you exercise correctly, which is scientific play, so it doesn't take long. That's the great thing about it. Let's talk a little bit about the actual process itself, because this is 20 minutes. This is going to blow the mind of a lot of people who think they have to be at the gym for hours, and I want you to explain how it works. Well, there's several ways to accomplish the Sprint 8 program. And, and first of all, one of the underlying principles is it's not body by feel or body by this and so. If we were to interview the body itself and ask the body, all right, we got all these people on TV, selling equipment, and all these people tell us how to exercise. The body is telling us exactly how to do it. And what the body is saying to us is, is when you exercise this way, 
I released this hormone that's so powerful that uh, it, uh, it, 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 it's illegal for athletes to use it because it improves performance. And on average case, when you inject growth hormone, uh, it pulls off 14.4% body fat, puts on 8% lean muscle mass. And what's significantly meaningful to a lot of women is it thickens your skin by 7.1%. And because of that, it fills in the wrinkles, and we all look a lot younger. So it does many, many great things, uh, maybe things that we don't even recognize that the body's doing for us yet in a, in a form of other hormones. There's basically one new hormone discovered every year. There are over 100 hormones now, uh, dopamine, serotonin, those hormones that uh, replicate natural Prozac, if you would, uh, are released with this type of exercise, and it's really nothing more than scientific play for adults in a safe way. So the way you would do sprint eight, uh, 20 minutes, three times a week, which matches the new guidelines for vigorous intensity cardio by the American Heart Association and the American College of Sports Medicine is basically uh, you can do it on any type of cardio equipment as long as you can get totally exhausted uh, within 30 seconds or less. And the reason why that's important is what we call the 30-second rule. If you, you know, your body always sends slow twitch fiber to accomplish the task first. But when it, but when your brain, your nervous system sense that velocity of movement, it basically says slow twitch is not adequate. I'm going to recruit this fast twitch fiber that's been sitting there dormant in case you need to run away from somebody or go uh, run a ball down at the net uh, when you're playing tennis. And so your body's trying not to use that because when you have to oxygenate quite literally twice the muscle fiber in your body, the slow and the fast twitch fiber then your heart muscle has to work a lot harder anaerobically. And when it does that, you know, you, it, within that whole process, your body raises the temperature, releases lactic acid, and for whatever reason, the body releases growth hormone in such a powerful force that it actually mimics taking injections of them. And that's why, uh, Kim, there's no test for Olympic athletes for growth hormone today because if you were to do the sprint eight and they were to pull your blood to check you for uh, injecting growth hormone, you would test false positives. That's the type of hormone. So we're talking about the same hormone that makes children grow tall. Dr. T.C. Welbert, LSU Medical Center, argues that the, the, the role of growth hormone is a perfect name until you reach your full height. But once you reach your full height, it should be called your fitness hormone. And I have to agree with that because when we use exercise and target at releasing maximum amounts of growth hormone, wonderful, great things happen to the body. And to some degree, you step out, it seems like you step out of a calorie and carbohydrate count world. So like Kim, what did carbohydrates and calories mean to you back when you were playing high-level competitive tennis? It really meant everything. Of course, the whole thinking was different then. I was told to have carbs before I played and protein afterward. There wasn't the anti-aging paradigm. You didn't think about taking amino acids or vitamins or herbs. There wasn't any of that thinking then. Maybe there was at the highest levels, but it really was just about staying hydrated and learning how to pace yourself and rest. But I was a serve and volleyer in tennis, so I used to get tired a lot because I was an attack style player. Serve and volley, serve and come in, close in on the opponent. It was an exhausting form of play, and it was high, high, high bursts. And what happens when you do that is basically a hard tennis match would be similar to doing sprint eight, but you can do it on any piece of a cardio equipment in 20 minutes, do it correctly. Basically involves a three-minute warm-up, nice and easy. If you're on some type of a machine that has 20 levels, for example, you'd put it on level two, go nice and easy for three minutes to get warmed up, and then put it on level 10 or so, depending on the machine, and go all out as fast as you can for 30 seconds. But it has to be the level of intensity that you could not go longer than 30 seconds, or that means you paced and, and, and probably didn't recruit uh, both types of fast switch fibers. Actually, two types of fast switch fiber uh, in that uh, classification. There's what we call fast switch 2A fiber that moves five times faster than slow, and the fast switch 2B fiber, or 2X fiber, some researchers call it, moves 10 times faster than slow. That's about 30% of your muscle fiber. Now, sometimes we read articles and we say, well, you know, this is a Kenyan cross-country runner. He's got all slow-twitch fiber. Well, if you do a biopsy on somebody that runs cross-country, you're going to see a lot of slow-twitch fiber. If you do a biopsy on a sprinter, you're going to see a lot of fast-twitch fiber because we know your body adapts to the way you train. For athletes, when we're working with athletes, if they train fast, they get fast because your body adapts to that by, by building stronger uh, fast fiber cells. And actually, in a growth hormone release environment, the research shows that 